Ah, uh, the Transformers. Mystery of Comboy. That's right, I said Comboy. It's supposed to say the word convoy, but somehow everyone in the programming and art department at Takara screwed up the name. They published it like that on both the art and cartridge. What you see here is an English fan translation, and I would venture to guess they made sure the title screen kept the misspelling for continuity, or they were just trying to be funny. You see, in Japan, Optimus Prime is known as Convoy, and the mystery here, and I say this word loosely, plot, is how Optimus died. If you're a fan of the original Generation 1 cartoon, then you probably know about the 1986 Transformers animated movie. In the movie, Prime and his nemesis Megatron duke it out to the death. The movie served as a link between season 2 and 3 of the cartoon series, which aired in both Japan and the US. However, Japan didn't get the movie until years later, after the series run had ended. This left many fans in Japan curious as to what happened to Prime between seasons 2 and 3. Rather than release the movie, Japan's answer was to develop and release this video game. So let's start this 8-bit masterpiece up and get some answers for ourselves, shall we? What just happened? I think Optimus Prime's head just exploded and Ultra Magnus just absorbed the chunks of brain into his chest cavity. Or maybe he passed down the Matrix of Leadership or the Allspark or whatever the hell Transformers religious BS you subscribe to. By the way, do you like Optimus Prime? I hope not. He isn't in this much other than this opening screen and then later his grayed out head appears randomly floating in space for no reason. Enjoy what you get, I guess. Oh great, it's time to have an epileptic seizure now. Cool! Some theme music I recognize from the TV show. Want more? Too bad. The rest of the music for each level is a cutesy generic loop, played over and over for each and every level of the game. The only variety in tunes comes when you fight a boss, or when you die. What the? Well that was quick. Died again. Come on! Really? This is just the first stage of ten! That familiar theme music I mentioned earlier is going to get annoying really fast, isn't it? Who are all these random Decepticons anyway? I kind of recognize a few. The tank has to be Blitzwing. The jets could be any one of the Seekers. Take your pick. Skywarp, Ramjet, or Thrust. None of them have this color scheme in the toys, comics, or show. So I'll just go with Thrust, because I like saying that name. Thrust. I'm pretty sure this is Laserbeak because it's a bird, and when you shoot it, it transforms into a cassette tape. Why it floats in the air and you can use it as a platform is a mystery for another day. What is this thing? A shrimp decon? I don't remember those from any continuity. Just look at these boss fights. Why are you the same size as this entire planet you have to destroy? Also, since when did Megatron grow five times the size of Ultra Magnus? Does this mean that Megatron is bigger than a planet? At least the final boss, Trypticon's size, makes sense as he's the Decepticon city while he's not in dinosaur mode, where Transformers are supposed to be able to live. By the way, if you beat Trypticon and you haven't collected all of the letters you need from blasting enemies who drop them to spell the word Rodimus, you get a dumb ending saying you need to play the game over and collect them all. Really? I have to go through all of that torment again? What do I get if I actually collect them all? Oh, I get to play the entire game again as Rodimus Prime. What a treat. There are a couple of small cameos from some of the more familiar names in the Transformers universe, though if you blink, you might miss them. From what I understand, this jet is supposed to be Starscream. If you kill him enough, Bumblebee will appear and you get to warp to a later stage. You're probably going to want to do this, because the less of this game you have to spend time dying over and over again, the better. Just look at all the times I've died. Boom! Kapow! Pooh. So many explosions. So many things flying at you on the screen at once. How can you keep up? It's like a Michael Bay Transformers movie. Wait a second. It's all starting to come together. The lack of plot. Random Transformers no one has ever heard of. Giving Optimus Prime very little screen time. The stupid ending. The feeling of wanting to stab your eyes out after witnessing all of it. Michael Bay based his Transformers franchise off this very game. 
It makes sense. He must have played this game as a young child, and now he's out to make sure every child, young and old, has a bad Transformers experience. Michael, I think you've made enough money off this deal where you could now afford a good psychiatrist and get some help, buddy. Once you do whatever you do after that, do not, I repeat, do not play the other lesser known Transformers game for the Famicom, Transformers Headmasters. Yeah, that review is coming next. Pray for me and all those around me. This one is gonna hurt. Did you enjoy your break? I hope you took it all in because this is about to get ridiculously dumb. This part of the review is like an old band-aid that's stuck on there really good. You can either pull it off slowly and hope there's just a little bit of pain, or you can rip that mother right off as fast as you can and deal with the pain for a few minutes after the job is done. I'll spare you the slow agony and go with the latter. You'll thank me later. This is Transformers The Headmasters, a video game based off the Japanese anime series of the same name. The United States got a fourth season of Transformers, with only three episodes in the entire run. It was supposed to be a five-part series featuring the story of the Headmasters, but due to budget cuts, it was pared down to three, squeezing in 46 characters to try and sell toys, making it some of the worst Transformers stories in canon. Japan flat out ignored the US and branched off with their own storyline. This game is the result of that new introduction. The music you're hearing? It's actually a pretty good rendition of the opening theme to the anime series. Anyway, let's press start and rip this band-aid right off. And wait. The Famicom is the Japan version of the NES. Only it had an add-on disc system where you could play Nintendo discs, which was a great way to save your game at the time. But the downside being, you would have to flip or change out the disc like any other old school computer game. Aren't loading times grand? Here we go. Put your name in, and now we can select from three, count them, three whole stages. Earth, Cybertron, or Jail. I wonder what happens in Transformers Jail. Don't drop the Energon. Let's start with Cybertron. You start off as the Autobot Headmaster Chrome Dome in vehicle mode. You don't get to transform in this game, which is really kind of idiotic for a game about Transformers. Sure, you get to play as a robot on the second half of each stage, but you never see or get to initiate the transformation. You think that the programmers or someone along the line in quality control would figure out what people want if they're going to be a transformer is the ability to transform. Instead, they decided to give us a non-stop barrage of bullets and weird objects like cassettes and onion rings flying around while we hang on for dear life. Did we all really like cassette tapes that much in the 80s? Grab a pencil and start spooling those tapes. That might make for a better game anyway. So basically the point of this game is to rescue your Autobot friends. Oh look, there's a very stiff looking Rodimus Prime's body being transferred somewhere by a magic helicopter flying without a propeller. Got him. Huh. For a giant robot weighing roughly four tons, he sure does float like a feather. Apparently he's fine too, as you can now switch Transformers to become him. Though he pretty much plays the same as Chrome Dome. Boring, but you need all five Autobots to beat the game. Plus, when you switch characters, you get a full power meter for each robot. So that's a plus. Here's Galvatron in all his glory. He looks just like a cartoon, doesn't he? No? The toy? Uh-uh. I like how he's not even using his arm cannon. He's just shooting bullets out of his crotch and his butt. Since you can only shoot straight ahead or at an angle, you have to pretty much keep to the left of the screen and spam him until he explodes. But the fun doesn't stop here. Now you get to explore the second part of the stage in robot mode. It's very tedious as you just fly around from room to room destroying enemies until one drops a weird looking Transformers logo which opens the door to the next room. Eventually you'll make your way to a stage boss. All of a sudden your bullets turn into bouncy balls and you find yourself in a game of what angle can I shoot to make this other bot explode? The controls are so stiff and floaty it makes it difficult to dodge or aim at anything. Oh, And if you die, get ready to throw a controller and save a few choice expletives because you are starting over from square one in vehicle mode again. Eventually, you collect all five Autobots from Cybertron in jail. 
The other three characters being Hardhead, Highbrow, and Brainstorm. Hardhead is a tank and kind of sucks. What's with the lob shot? Highbrow and Brainstorm both fly, which is kind of refreshing for a few seconds since it sort of changes the way the levels are played. It's easier to take down a boss like Trypticon, who by the way looks like he shrunk since Mystery of Comboy, straight on with a jet than with your angled shot as a car. So yeah, beat all the bosses and you're on to the final stage called Last. Clever name, Takara. Way to use that creativity. I guess all of that creativity must have went into this cinema scene where all five Autobots hop into Fortress Maximus, who's actually rendered as a character named Metroplex in Battle Station mode. Imagine that, another mistake in this game. Once the scene ends, it's on to the final battle with Scorponok. Holy cow, Scorponok just transformed. The first on-screen transformation in a game about Transformers is on a stage called Last. It's like if you had a movie called Batman where a guy named Bruce Wayne fights crime all day and night until the very last scene where you see a criminal dress up as a bat and Bruce has to stop them from destroying the city. It doesn't make much sense. Does Fortress Maximus get to transform? Hell no! You get to jump around like a fool taking five bullets at a time and die a lot. Here's a quick montage of many deaths trying to beat this flunkhead. Got him! It's amazing! Now let's see what glorious ending they have cooked up for us, shall we? Chrome Dome away! Yeah, Rodimus Chrome boy! <sighs> hard head. <laughs> you said hard head. <laughs> Hmm, and of course, Highbrow, the most distinguished Transformer. And Brainstorm, which never once occurred during the creation of this game. Congratulations, you get one single solitary congratulation. Great effort on your part, Takara. Thanks for trying so hard to put out such a rewarding quality product. It makes you just want to play it over and over again. You know, I've dreamed of playing these games since I first heard about them as a child and wondered why they couldn't make it overseas to the fans. Now years have passed and not even nostalgia goggles can save these from being some of the worst games I've ever played in my life. Anyway, I guess the band-aid came off a lot slower than I expected. Plus, I kind of kept putting it back on and ripping it off again and again. Then again, some people like that kind of thing. If so, maybe these old Transformers games are for you. But not you, Michael Bay. 